Pistol y Conosciuto and uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Michael Younger, who said he was a liaison for a group called Comp 12, he told me that Michael Riconosciuto's wife is present at that meeting that about Area 51. And so uh, I think that I believe that Bobby Riconosciuto, I think that was her name. I, I was introduced to her for, uh, for a minute or two. And uh, so I was very, very surprised that uh, she was there, you know. And uh, I don't know how she came into that UFO meeting, but uh, probably had to do with uh, Michael Riconosciuto because I also had a friend by the name of Patrick O'Shea, uh, Patrick M. O'Shea. Uh, he told me that he was in constant touch with Michael Riconosciuto uh, you know, uh, even after he went to prison uh, in uh, Lompoc, California, uh, uh, Michael Riconosciuto uh, gave information to my friend Patrick O'Shea in Los Angeles, and Patrick O'Shea kept in touch with him, but I don't know how deep their relationship was, but... Uh, uh, Patrick O'Shea uh, emailed me uh, many times about what Michael Riconosciuto was doing. and uh, But anyway, uh, he told me that uh, Michael Riconosciuto was going to be released from the uh, correctional facility in Lompoc, California. And uh, so indeed that became true. He, he was released... But uh, for some strange reason or other, Michael Riconosciuto was afraid to go out anywhere. Uh, and uh, he was kind of paranoid about everything. And I think, I think he decided that it's unsafe to be in any community. So I think that he decided maybe it's best to remain in uh, incarcerated somewhere. Uh, so I'm not sure how this true this is. Uh, a couple of questions but, about uh, Rick Conosciuto. Um First of all, I think it's important to, it, it, clearly the guy does have some kind of manufacturing of narcotics in, in his background. And, and a lot of these guys too, uh, John Booth Nichols, uh, you know, they're out there doing stuff, arms dealing. They're doing stuff on the side besides uh, <laughs> what we know them for. And, but but it seems like we're kind of shoot was just, you know, going along, you know, he's, he's designing weapons. He's doing all this stuff, you know, the back doors to, to promise software and getting away with it all um, until he does an affidavit for Mr. William Hamilton. And then two weeks later, they pick him up on these charges, these methamphetamine uh, manufactured charges. Now, in your experience with uh, Kaneshudo and the people around him, as, and you describe his paranoia, um, many people would, would suggest that the paranoia is a uh, symptom of the use of methamphetamine. But what do you think of, of that? Could that possibly be a, an issue here? Uh, that's very possible, I think. And uh, because, you know, Michael Sh Reconosciuto himself uh, has a multifaceted, uh, you know, involvement with, with anything. And uh, so he was involved in, in so many things. And, uh, you know, many times he was himself kind of uh, confused. And mm -hmm. I believe that he used all kinds of disinformation as well to confuse people, and maybe he enjoyed confusing people. Uh, but uh, one interesting thing about Michael Riconosciuto is that uh, he believed that uh, besides the Cabazon Indian Reservation in Southern California, he seemed to believe that uh, that there was uh, other facilities uh one of the facilities 
he believed was in New Mexico. Mm. Believe it or not, he was aware that there was uh, some kind of uh, uh, underground facility in Dulce, New Mexico. And this is sounds strange, but, uh, you know, there was this magazine called a Technical Consultant that appeared in 1990, uh, early 1990, I think. This technical consultant magazine had nothing to do with the UFOs, but uh, there was an article in that that claimed that uh, that uh, the helicopter crash in uh, near Area 51 in 1991 had something to do with Wackenhut, and that Wackenhut was responsible for. Uh, Securities in very sensitive the military installations, but also this technical consultant claimed that there was a, a facility in uh, Dulce, New Mexico, that is very curious. Uh, and so, technical consultant magazine contacted the uh, tribal council or tribal officials of Dulce, New Mexico, which is an Indian reservation. Again, you know, here comes the Indian reservation uh, thing again. Mm -hmm. But uh, anyway, uh, the uh, technical consultant magazine talked with the tribal officials who were scared on the telephone to talk about what they know. So there could be something to this story, you know, that uh, the government, uh, through the people like Wackenhut Corporation, may have been doing some uh, military experiments. Uh, you know, I know that in Cabazon they were doing some kind of uh, fuel air uh, explosives and so on. And, you know, so who knows, uh, you know, what what this is all about. Yeah, I hear you, man. <laughs> you know? um, what do you make of the, the Netflix documentary? It, there was a lot of great new information came out. Um, but the last episode, they, they smear uh, Mr. Hamilton, which I'm I, I very outraged about. And they also smear a kind of shooter, too. They, they, these guys are having fantasies. Uh, what do you make of that? What did you make of the overall Netflix and, and especially the, the smearing of Hamilton with kind of shooter? Well, that, uh, I mean, all I can say is that this documentary was unprecedented in so many ways. Yeah. It was a real depiction of the dark side of uh, governmental involvement in all kinds of, uh, you know, uh, cover-ups and uh, all kinds of uh, disinformation and and uh, theft of, uh, you know, technologies that were developed by uh, private individuals. And somehow they got involved in... Uh, stealing those sensitive uh, technologies uh, and uh, for their own benefit. And so overall, Ed, I think this was a groundbreaking documentary series. And I was so surprised that Netflix uh, aired this. And uh, But the overall impression is that you don't know who to believe at the very end. Right. At the very end, you don't know whom to believe, and maybe that was the whole point of that uh, documentary. Do you look at it with any suspicion that uh, the documentary filmmakers just pretty much came out of nowhere? I, no one's ever heard of these people before. You're, you're, that's a good point, <laughs> uh, Ed, because who, who decided to... Yeah produced this thing and who decided to air it uh, nationwide on Netflix, a topic that is so, so filled with uh, realistic items, but yet concealed uh, with uh, all kinds of uh, nonsensical uh, materials, right. but uh, believable in many, many parts. And so this whole program may have been some kind of an intended uh, 
this information ploy or something using Netflix. I don't know what to think about it. Well, Minoria Hayakawa, I can tell you that I'm in touch with, still with Hamilton, um, I'm in touch with uh, some people from Covert Action Magazine that have been coming out talking about this. And my understanding is that uh, Hamilton, Reconosciuto, and even the Casalero family are all about to come out and, and uh, with the complaints about this documentary. And, and you can only imagine because, you know, you have to sign all kinds of uh, NDAs and all kind of uh, you know ag- agreements when you when you participate with something as big as Netflix. So it's just it's all in the background bubbling up there. Um, I, but I have a question for you and, and your experience in this area uh, with these conferences, especially. Um, and, you know, you got John Booth Nichols and Wack and Hutch showing up at your conference here. Um, another fellow, kind of a curveball I'm throwing you, Gordon Novell, uh, who's also mixed up in these type of intelligence operations, former who knows what. <laughs> OK, you know, but Gordon Novell. And he also became attracted to the ufology conferences and stuff. Did you run across him? No, I I don't think I recall that name. OK, but I, I've attended so many conferences and uh I don't uh, actually uh, attend any conferences anymore uh, because uh, I don't see the point. And, uh, in, you know, right now there are so many things that are being propagated uh, in the ufological community. And uh, so last year, uh, you know, there was this uh, congressional hearing mm-hmm. about uh, UFOs and even that itself was so strange and incomprehensible what they achieved. Uh, I have no idea what the purpose of that uh, so-called, uh, so-called UFO type of uh, uh, release of information. It's, you know, people like, there are people, strange people and characters such as uh, Luis Elizondo and you know, all kinds of people that uh, are involved in uh, propagation of something that cannot be proven. Mm. But uh, people are being brainwashed, unfortunately, by all kinds of uh, disinformation coming even from the uh, uh, Pentagon itself. And uh, so finally, my conclusion is that I don't think, and I don't think there is, an intentional cover-up of the UFO phenomenon by the Pentagon. I think the point is that the Pentagon themselves do not understand this phenomenon, and this is the reason why they cannot make any statements uh, without bringing up items that cannot be proven by science. And so the Pentagon is just as perplexed by this strange uh, UFO phenomenon. And this is the reason why they can't make any announcements, because the people want answers. And the Pentagon cannot give any answers, because they are totally confused about this perplexing phenomenon that may include not only physical aspects uh, but uh, maybe uh, there could be some non-physical uh, uh, aspects of this phenomenon in, in which they don't want to go into it because they are not in the business of uh, religious beliefs. But uh, I think that's the whole point. And so a lot of people believe that there's a, a hidden cover-up, uh, that, that the Pentagon is uh, covering up the aliens and all that stuff but uh, you know I think that uh, it's difficult to come out with a clean answer because they don't want to come out with a clean answers because they don't know what they are talking about even themselves because this the whole thing could go into uh, uh, some kind of a, a quantum uh, theory quantum leap into uh, uh, of science, and uh, it's very difficult to explain to the public. So, but uh, you know, there are strange characters in this kind of situation in the ufology, and those who are 
pretending to be part of the government and those who are pretending that they know the reality, uh, but uh, it, but they don't really. They're just a second-hand 